Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Tiffany and this is Tiffany Makes Soap. I decided to start this channel because I found a hobby in soap making and I wanted to share some of the helpful information that I've learned over the last few months as well as to learn some additional information from fellow soapers as well. There's a lot of really, really awesome content on YouTube and I hope that I can help contribute to that community. In today's video, I'd like to talk about how to calculate a soap recipe. Calculating a soap recipe is probably one of the most important things that you can do in soap making. It's really important to understand the ingredients that are in the batch of soap that you're going to make so that you can ensure that there's a proper oil to lye ratio. If you have too much lye in your soap, it can cause problems such as skin irritation and potentially even burn your skin. Lye is a caustic material. It can harm you, so it's very important to check all of your recipes against the soap calculator to ensure that you are not having a lye-heavy soap batch. There are several soap calculators that you can find online, and they're very easy to locate, and I'm going to walk through three of those soap calculators with you today to show you what is available for you. Before I get started though, I just want to run through a couple of questions that I ask myself every time that I create a batch of soap. It helps me set myself up for success in the soap calculation process. The first question that I ask myself is how much soap do I want to make? This is to determine the total weight of the soap in relation to the mold that you are going to use. Remember that every mold has a different total volume that it can accommodate. So you want to make sure that you understand and know in advance which mold you're planning to use when you're making your soap recipe. The second question that I ask myself when I, whenever I make a soap batch is which oils and fragrances do I want to use? Some oils have certain properties such that they should not exceed certain recommendations such as 5% or even 30%. You want to know in advance which oils you want to use just so that you know uh, which uh, percentage of ratios you want to apply to each of those soaps as well. The same thing can be said for fragrances. Some fragrances are well behaved in cold process soap, meaning that they, they don't accelerate trace. You want to know in advance how much fragrance you're going to use and which type just so that you can prepare yourself for the potential reaction that you're going to get from your soap batch. The third question that I ask myself is how much of a water discount do I want to use? Water discounting helps the soap release from its mold faster, as well as shortens the drying and curing time. So using less water will ultimately mean there's less water that you have to wait to evaporate in the curing process. Sometimes soapers will also use a water discount if they're using a recipe that contains additional additives such as fruit or coconut milk. You wanna account for different ingredients besides water, lye, and oil. Additionally, a water discount will help sometimes reduce the chance of soda ash and glycerin rivers. One other thing to keep in mind about water discounts, however, is that if you use a water discount, it is more likely that your batter will thicken faster. There is less water in the recipe, meaning it's more lye heavy, and that therefore means that it will react with the oil faster. So. If you use a water discount, just be prepared for the possibility that your batter might thicken faster than you anticipated. The final question that I ask myself whenever I create a soap recipe is how much of a super fat do I want to account for? Super fat is basically excess oil. Each oil has its own saponification value, which is the amount of lye needed to turn the oil into soap. If you use the exact lye to oil ratio, then your super fat value would be 0%. Having a super fat leaves a little bit of oil behind, which moisturizes the skin, but also ensures that the soap won't be lye heavy. Some soapers will use 1%, some will use 20%. Obviously, the more super fat you have in there, the more oil is left over. So just keep that in mind. I generally try to super fat between 3 and 8%. It just depends on what I am working on and which oils I'm working with. But there's no prescribed limitation. You just want to sort of pay attention to how your soaps are turning out and whether or not you like the amount of lather or moisturizing that you're receiving from the soap batch. Okay, so now that I've covered the basic four questions that I ask myself at the beginning of each soap batch that I want to make, I'm going to walk you through three different soap calculators. The first soap calculator that I'm showing here on the screen is from soapcalc.net. 
This is a very popular SOAP calculator and I use it very often for my own SOAP recipes. There are four steps to follow at the beginning that I'm going to run through with you here. So the first step is determining the type of lye that you're going to use. NaOH stands for sodium hydroxide, which is the type of lye that you would be using if you were making a hard bar of soap. KOH stands for potassium hydroxide, which would be used for liquid soap. The second step is the weight of oils. This is completely up to you and how you like to measure your soap recipes. I generally measure in ounces, but if you're on a different system and you prefer grams or if you want to work in pounds, if you're making bulk amounts of soap, please feel free to change this. So the very first soap recipe I ever made was actually about 16 ounces of oil. And so I'm going to run through that recipe with you guys today. This is about half of a 10 inch mold. The third step is whether or not you want to apply a water discount. It automatically defaults to 38%. You can increase this, you can decrease it. But if you're starting out with soap making, perhaps just stick to 33 to 38% or so of water as a percentage of your oils. The fourth step is the super fat, as I discussed earlier. I'm going to be making an olive oil, coconut oil, and castor oil soap that has 10% super fat. I'm not going to be using any fragrance in this soap batch, so I'm going to make this zero. The next step in the soap calculation process is selecting the oils that you're going to be using in your recipe. Right here is the oils, fats, and waxes. You can scroll up and down. You can put, you can type in the first letter of the oil that you are working with and it'll take you up to that part of the alphabet. I'm just going to scroll down for you guys today. So when you want to add the oil, you can double click it or you can select it and push the plus button or the minus button to take it away or the add or and then if you want to remove the item, you can remove it as well. So I'm just going to double click this. So I'm using castor oil, coconut oil. You're almost always going to be using coconut oil that melts at 76 degrees and olive oil. You can calculate your oils based on a percentage or based on ounces. For this recipe, I'm going to use ounces since it is a recipe that I had written down in my journal previously and it will show you the percentages after you enter the information in. So castor oil was 0.5, coconut oil was 5 ounces, and olive oil was 11. That's just a little bit under 16 ounces as I had calculated up here. And then the seventh step is calculating the recipe. And as you can see, it displays the percentage of oils in your recipe for you. And then you can also see the soap qualities uh, in advance, but there is another screen where you can see the soap qualities here as well. So with this recipe, the total oil weight is 16.5 ounces. Uh, water as a percentage of oil is 38% and super fat is 10%. So my water to lye ratio is 2.8198 to one part lye. Saturated to unsaturated fat is 37 to 63. If this number is higher than 50, it makes using swirls a little bit more difficult. So I try to keep this number low if I'm planning on doing a swirl technique or any, any sort of um, manipulation of colors in the recipe. You can see it broken down by pounds, by ounces, and by grams. So even if you entered in your recipe using ounces, it will still calculate for you as if it's in grams as well. So as I said earlier, this was my initial recipe right here. And this is going to tell me that I need 6.27 ounces of water and 2.22 ounces of lye to ensure that this amount of oil will ultimately turn into soap and create my soap batch. Soap bar qualities are a really helpful range to look at. This lets you know that your soap is sort of within the ideal ranges for preferred soaps. As you can see, each of these qualities falls within the recommended ranges, but this is not a hard and fast rule. 
if for some reason you have a hardness beyond 54% and you intended that to be the case, then of course, please proceed. Coconut oil, for example, if you have a really high coconut oil ratio in your soap recipe, you will have a very hard bar. So that's just one thing to keep in mind when you're calculating your recipes. This is a show graph so that you can see the soap qualities. I don't really use this very often, but it's worth keeping in mind if that's something that you want to take care of and track. You can save your recipe. So I'm going to say first batch ever. And then you can print it. And usually what I do is I will print a PDF and I can save this in, on a local drive. If you want to add any notes, for example, if you wanted to tell yourself later which colors you wanted to use, purple and gold, fragrance, none, and in any notes that you want to enter in. So say, for example, you already created this batch of soap and you were paying attention to its qualities after it cured, you can enter that information here. Curing time, for example, creamy, smooth lather. I actually really like this bar of soap a lot and I want to make it again. So that's it. That's a pretty easy method of using soapcalcula.net. Anytime that you want to make adjustments to your recipe, you can certainly do that. For example, if I want to go up to one ounce of soap, I'm going to calculate this recipe and then I'm going to view it and I'll show you the differences there. So you see how I added approximately half of an ounce of castor oil, which brought its prior ratio from about 3% up to 5.88%. It also changed the lye to water ratio. So these are just things to keep in mind when you are making adjustments to your recipes. The second soap calculator that I'm showing on the screen right now is from the soapcalculator.com. And this is a pretty simple and straightforward soap calculator option to use. They have similar questions that soapcalc.net has, but they're laid out in a different presentation. As you can see, the first step is the question of whether or not you're making a solid or a liquid soap. And as I said before, NaOH is sodium hydroxide. This is used in solid bars. KOH is potassium hydroxide, which is used in liquid soap. The next question is, are you measuring in weight or percentages of oils? And this is, again, a personal preference in how you prefer to measure out your oils. You can select percentages of the default. You can opt for grams, which will then change the selections to follow, depending on which one you go for. Notice how if you select percentage of oils, it'll ask you what is the total weight of all the oils that you will use. If you change this to ounces, it will not ask you that because you should already know what the total weight of ounces of oils you plan to use will be. So for consistency's sake, I'm just going to select ounces since in the last, the last calculator I used 16 ounces, I'll use the same amount here. And uh, the next question here is how much will you super fat your soap? This is defaulted to 5%, but at least for this calculator, it says its recommended values are 1 to 10. As I said before, you can exceed 10 if you want. It's totally up to you. I'm going to default this to 10, as that is what the super fat in the last recipe was as well. The next question is how much water will you put in your soap? 38% is the default. This is the same default as soapcalc.net. Recommended values, as I said, are 33 to 38%, but of course, if you want to have a steeper water discount of 25%, for example, you can do that as well. I'm going to go back to 38 just to stay consistent. And here's where you select your oils and fats. And similar to soapcalc.net, it has a list of oils that you can select from. And I will select castor oil coconut oil, and olive oil. And I'll enter in the same ounces as I did previously. 
This has an optional section where you can select additional ingredients if you'd like, if you're using aloe vera, any other fragrances, essential oils, herbs. I'm not going to select any of these right now because I'm not using fragrance in this batch. And then you calculate. And in a similar manner, it displays your basic ingredients, the amount of water you will need, the amount of lye that you will need, and it gives you the soap characteristics with the ranges. So it's no secret that this information is the same as soapcalc.net. It's just presented in a different format. So really a matter of personal preference and what you are interested in, how you like to absorb information vi visually. If we were going to compare the two, we can see that the water is 6.27 here. They rounded it up to 6.3. It's totally fine to do that. Lie 2.22 here. 2.2 here. So it looks like they're only going one digit beyond the decimal. Uh, soap qualities are about the same. So again, a matter of personal preference, this is just another soap calculator that's available to you. I've used this calculator in situations where for some reason soap calc net was unavailable to me. It could have been my internet provider. There was one time where I was trying to get on on various devices and it just was not loading the website. So I found soapcalculator.com to calculate a soap recipe in a pinch, which I found very helpful. So the third and final calculator that I'm going to show you is from brambleberry.com. If you are new to soaping, Brambleberry is a wonderful, wonderful product provider. They have so much helpful information and content. They have a blog. They have demonstrations, a, an incredible amount of educational information, and I would highly recommend looking to Brambleberry as a source of information if you're looking to get into soap making and, and how to get started. It's, it's a great resource. It's a great company. Um, so this is presented a little bit differently. This is on brambleberry.com. I usually find this through Googling Brambleberry soap calculator. This is a lye calculator as well as a fragrance calculator. So depending on what you want to work with, you can choose one or the other. I'm going to select lye calculator since I'm calculating a soap recipe as well. And I'll just walk you through the steps here. So the first question is to choose your soap type and measurement units. This is consistent with the last two calculators. We're going to select solid. I'm going to select ounces, but you have the options for grams and percentage. And my super fat level is 10%. Brambleberry only lets you go from 2 to 10%. So if you wanted to go more than 10%, you might want to use one of the other two calculators. Totally up to you. You select next. And then it asks you what the ingredients are. And as we know, the ingredients for this recipe are castor oil, coconut oil, and olive oil. So the question to focus is what are your ingredients amounts by weight? And since I selected ounces, these are the ounces that I'm inputting. Select next. And here are the results, which is pretty straightforward. Just note that Brambleberry doesn't ask you about a water discounts, which I find very interesting. So just keep that in mind. The, as you can see, the, the amount of lye for this batch is the same across all three calculators. The only thing that is different here is the amount of water used. This says 4.96. This one said 6.3. So it looks like this water, this percentage to water ratio is probably a little bit lower than 38% which is fine, totally not a problem. It'll just mean that the bar will probably cure a little bit faster and be able to come out of the mold a little bit sooner. Um, the one thing to note is that Brambleberry does not offer the soap characteristic ranges. So if you're interested in that, you might wanna look to the one of the other two soap calculators, but this is probably one of the most straightforward and easy to use lie calculators available. If you wanna resize, change it from ounces to grams, you can do that. Resize batch. If you wanted to go 32 ounces, it'll adjust everything for you. As you can see, I doubled the recipe, so therefore the amount of lye to be used almost doubled, the amount of liquids almost doubled. Same thing with the ounces of oil as well.
that's it for me. That's the demonstration on how to use three different types of soap calculators when you're creating a soap recipe for yourself. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'd be very happy to answer them for you. And if I don't have the answers immediately, I will certainly refer you to some wonderful resources that should probably help. And if you've made it this far, please know that I appreciate you very much and thank you so much for watching. And if you found any value in this video and if you learned something today, please do me a favor, hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. I'd be so happy to hear from you and um, welcome you to the community. Thanks so much. Bye.